this man is showing all the signs of a serious drugs overdose. Scott, are you on methadone, love? I'm just checking, Scott, that you haven't taken it all today because you seem a little bit under the influence. Scott Walker is a custody regular. He's been a heroin addict half his life. You got the pen wrong way around for a start. Here, put it that way around. He's just taking something that's off his face. It's not an unusual way for Scott to come in. He's so out of it, he's handed himself in for a burglary he didn't even commit. They've already nicked someone else for it. You're nodding out, Scott, like somebody who's going over. Can you open your eyes for me really, really wide? Yeah, your pupils are quite small, Scott. Stay with us. We don't know what he's taking, but I'm fairly sure it's heroin, knowing his history. Come down this way for us, buddy. Uh, you're welcome there, yeah? Because it could be an overdose, he's being put on 15-minute checks. This is your favourite camera cell. Scott, wake up for us, mate. Open your eyes. As soon as he lies down, he loses consciousness. It looks worse than I've ever seen him look before. Scott, wake up, mate. Open your eyes for us. Scott. Have you looked face? Welcome to the lockup. This is Hull, gateway to the North Sea. A one and a half billion pound transfusion has changed the face of the city since many of the docks and shipbuilders closed down. But as employment declined, addictions went up. Now about one in 20 people in Hull are hooked on either booze or class A drugs. And many of them end up here, at Humberside Police Headquarters, where over a third of its guests are drunk or drugged up. We've been filming here for six months. The man in charge is Sergeant Rob Grunner. It's quite entertaining when the door opens to see what's coming through next. The fucking killing me. You've got to be alert and switched on and ready to deal with whatever it is that's coming. It's only a couple of years since Rob earned his stripes, and in custody, you have to learn fast. Scott, can you open your eyes for me? Scott, can you feel that? Scott Walker's now barely breathing. I just about twisted his ear off there and not... no register of pain, nothing, not even a wince. He's only taking six breaths a minute, less than half the normal rate. He's overdosed on something, we don't know what he's taken. He's not in a position to tell us what he's taken, so we haven't got a clue. Luckily, the nurse is here, so we can get him instant medical attention. They now think it's heroin, and it's shutting down his system. It's very serious. His body is slowing down to a stop. It's a depressant. It will depress his respiratory system. He is breathing, but it's very slow and shallow. If untreated, obviously, that process can continue to get worse and worse and slow down to a complete stop, and then there are no breaths. That's a heroin overdose. I've started intramuscular Narcan, which doesn't work as quick as like it does on Pulp Fiction. Narcan blocks heroin getting to where breathing's controlled, so should allow Scott's body to kick in again. Nurse Adele can do no more. Scott could still die. He needs to be monitored in hospital. Scott? Hello, Scott? Hello? Can you open your eyes? I'm the ambulance service. I'm Lisa. Can you tell me your name? You go into hospital now. We have had overdoses before. Uh, it's a case of doing the absolute best you can, getting an ambulance on 999 and hoping that they get here as soon as possible. It's not very often I have someone that poorly in. <laughs> I'll be all right after a sweet cup of tea. <laughs> I have I've got a proper shake on. It's not funny, is it, really? But this is the job we do. Sergeant Grunner leads a team of detention officers whose job it is to look after everyone who's in the lockup. But today, he's a man or woman down. All right, then, thanks, Faye. Unfortunately, uh, Sarah's overslept this morning, so we were all very worried about her, but she's okay. So we don't have to go around and 
ban bang a door in and uh, go and search for her. She's always here on time, uh, so that's why it was more worrying that, where is she? So, I was going to say, we've all done it, but I've never done it. Never. <laughs> Full team or not, crime waits for no man. 21-year-old Ryan Chadburns had a bust up with his girlfriend and then with the police. The criminal damage has been ID'd by partner for causing damage within the flat. And then on being arrested, he's assaulted an officer by pushing him in the chest. At the end of the day, if you've got eight coppers surrounding you, piling you, of course you're going to retaliate at you. What's that on your knuckles? Punching the door. When you've ever been in custody, have you ever done anything to deliberately harm yourself? No, apart from you give me a breakfast pack and I nearly joked on a oh, sausage. Can imagine, can imagine mate. Can imagine. <laughs> Probably the bare beans. Any other issues that's going to affect you whilst you're with us? Yeah, if I'm in for longer than two or three hours, it might be an issue. <laughs> Why? Because I just don't want to fucking be here, mate, to be fair. Oh, fucking... Just, get me in, just put me in the cell, please. This way. We basically got a call from his girlfriend saying that he was smashing up the flat and that when the police got there he was going to basically kill us all and do all sorts of horrible things to ourselves. As we've got there, he's, uh, he's left on a bike. We've gone to get him and as we've turned up to get him, he's uh, lost in his hand, which he's threatened us with. And uh, at that point he was arrested. Ryan has been in the lockup only minutes, but he wants out now. He's got a good rhythm going there. And the officers are feeling the rhythm of the night. Can you name that show? Bit of Phil Collins. Okay. In the air tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Lost it, no one. Good evening, Wembley! But Sergeant Grunner's finally had enough. Ryan's getting so violent he could injure himself. Just watch your phone. And with Scott away, he's moving into the camera cell to be watched. Ryan. Oh, no. He can bang as much as he wants, really. The more people bang, we know that they're all right. It's the quiet ones that we have to, uh, obviously, uh, be careful of. He's quite volatile now. He's really wound up. He just, he just needs to settle down. We can't deal with him while he's like this, um, but he doesn't seem to listen to reason at the moment. It's that samba beat. You could shut your eyes. We could be in Brazil. I know, we're back in here. Really sorry, I'm late. Afternoon. Detention officer Sarah has arrived. Not a good start to there, is it? So we've had the helicopter up, we've had dogs out, Wayne was crying, Chris was pacing up and down worried. Well, I'm never going to hear the end of this now. <laughs> she may have missed the drama and the music, but she's just in time for the political satire. I'm just in Labour Party and Labour's working. Circumstance. Yeah. Unemployed, unemployed. We've attended a an address this evening and been told by a neighbour that they've seen this female running through the communal areas, smashing on doors. Oh, I don't think so. I don't With think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't you have any medical conditions? No, I'm not Max, so communist. Do you have any medical conditions? No, I'm not Max, so communist. Do you know, are you a diabetic? No, I'm not Max, so communist. Nobody said you are, have they? Well, I've rested before then. This is the second time in 24 hours Jeanette has been arrested for alcohol fuel offences. She's been running around uh, in drink, uh, waving her hammer about and banging at people's doors with an hammer. 
So unfortunately, we've had to bring her in for a free. No, put it in your mouth first, though. <laughs> Go on. You know what you should be Go doing. On. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, not gonna get no, Max, I'm communist! Forget it. We'll try to put Jeanette in. She's obviously well too uh, in drink. And the best thing to do is to pop her down into a cell, let her get some sleep, and we'll uh, process her in the morning when she's sobered up. I reckon we'd at least half the number of people we'd get in here. Come on, then. I'm an RS6, I'm Max, I'm communist. And we laugh and joke along with it, but I think if you do look behind it, it's quite a serious thing. I do feel a little bit sorry for her. She's obviously got some issues and I, I think she needs help, possibly elsewhere, but we've got people to look after and we have to deal with things as we see them and our, our only choice at that time is to bring her here. Are you sure you don't want your jeans? No, I'm not that, so I promise. All right, then. Good night. Good night. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> Put me head in my hands and cry. <laughs> Two hours later, Scott returns from hospital. Because of a heroin overdose, he'd lost consciousness for half an hour. The drugs Nurse Adele gave him saved his life. How are you feeling now, Scott? Better? A bit better? A bit better, yeah. I'm glad he's alive more than anything. Um, He's clearly uh, been pulled back from the brink, which is good. I just hope he realises how close he's come and the fact that we've actually just saved his life. I'm glad you came back from hospital looking 100% better than when you left. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway. You're welcome. I'd like to see you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, look at that very often. How nice was that? <laughs> see you later, Scott. Yeah. Bye. Scott's been a heroin addict since he was 15. He's now 34. He's been arrested over 50 times, mainly for possessing Class A drugs and theft to fund his habit. Last time we saw him in the lockup, he was denying stealing for his fix. Disgusting, that, cos I, I hadn't even done that wrong. But was fully aware of the vicious circle he was in. When you're on drugs and you've got bad drug problems, you're trying to get money from it, here, there and everywhere, that, that's all your life revolves around getting drugs. I mean, you lose respect off your friends and your family. You don't realise who you're upsetting. You've got no routine. You lose self-respect. Where's the life? You know, you just existing. Two years on, the drugs have clearly taken their toll. Yes, it's just look there for a few seconds. Fantastic. Even though Scott's just OD'd, he still has to do the mandatory drugs test for possible thieves and drug addicts. Scott, just put that in your mouth because it's good purely for the drug testing. It's sad because he's a nice lad to deal with, but he's getting worse. He's coming in more of a state out on the street. If he's, a, if he's in a state like that, you just think about how vulnerable they are. It's worrying that that could happen any, at any time with him, and you wonder for the future that potentially it could be life-threatening and he'll be on his own. I, I, I like to get away from all this shit and start a new life, get a nice lass. I, I don't know which way to turn, you know what I mean? Scott, your drug test result is uh, you're positive for opiates, OK? And the cocaine is negative. Do you accept that result? Yes, you do. Do you want a copy of this at all? I don't remember nothing at all. It just pitch black. Uh, I woke up and I thought, what am I doing here? And, and the staff told me that. <laughs> I've been unconscious for half an hour. Scary. Do you know how close you came? Much of
Everyone's here on Fuck Lab. Fuck off. I have done fuck all wrong. Ryan's just been interviewed by detectives and he's still not happy. Very hairy. He did eventually calm down, but he's just not having any of it. What's the deal, man? Stop raising your hands, man. Come on. Let the fucking go, man. Out. What the fuck? Let go, man. Let go, man. Now walk. Come on, then. Let go, man. Now walk. You'll see him. Just walk. Fuck off. In your cell, man. In your cell. Say you go, man. Hey, just leave me alone. You just leave me alone. To yourself. Stop making things. Stop tensing up. Police are allowed to restrain, to stop prisoners hurting themselves or officers. Control of his head is key, so he does as he's told and to protect everyone. Their exit from the cell is a coordinated manoeuvre. well-built lad. He immediately tensed up, the fists were clenched, and now the sort of things we're looking for straight away. It's the danger signs that he's going to attack and uh, assault one of us. And while the textbooks say you do it in a certain way, ultimately it just becomes a bit of a scrum. Some good arm locks there, though, aren't they? One, one of us is going to get punched in. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's injured or anything from no. that. No. I've got a scrape. Yeah. Oh, you've got a scrape, yeah. I've got a mark on my shirt. Yeah, that's, I'll be off sick for a week for that. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything to get out of custody. Yeah. <laughs> Jeanette has slept off her radical rantings. Morning. Morning. Hiya. Now she's concerned about a crime of fashion. You're taking your blanket with you? No, I've got a lot. Oh, you've got a mini skirt. I've got a police blue. <laughs> It's just round here. I'll show you which room it is. She's finally sober enough to be booked in. It was you a bit west for wear when you came in this morning. I was a bit drunk, yeah. How much alcohol did you have? I don't know. I bought four Polish beers. Did you drink them all? But I don't know. I don't remember anything. I, I was drinking it so fast. I just got out of cells and then I went back in and I got drunk and ended up back in. Jeanette's drinking has landed her in custody twice in the last 24 hours. Just have to let you know, Jeanette, that your fingerprints are on computer file. The police might use them to identify you. I had them done yesterday. You had your prints done? Yeah. Was you in yesterday? I was, I've been in two days running. Right, I have to do them each time, All right. unfortunately. <laughs> You're not having much luck lately, then. Mm. I'll be missing you if I'm not in tonight. <laughs> I know, what are you going to do? <laughs> We don't know what's happened in people's lives that have led to them coming through that door. And when they do come through the door, if they're in drink or drugs, they can be so violent and spitting and swearing and carrying on. And yet, when they're sober, they're the most pleasant, lovely people you can meet, and it's, it's almost a pleasure to be able to sit and speak to them and learn a bit about them. We've all got a story, but all people see is the day you were drunk, isn't it? And that's the person you are. I've, I've done lots of things. I've, I've, I've been a teacher, I've, I've worked in educational welfare, I've trained to be a social worker, I've got two degrees, and, but as a single parent, I brought a child upon me and everything got a little bit too stressful for me. There was lots of changes in education, paying a mortgage, and I just started to drink, slowly started to drink too much. It takes away all social conditioning, it takes away all the veneer of civilization and you just gradually become more and more just like a wild person, you know, as a wild animal, really. I'm beyond worrying, I really am. I've reached the point where I'm just beyond it. 
Jeanette's fate now lies with Rob Grunner. The sergeant must balance her legal rights with the protection of the public. I have to make a decision on whether to release her on bail or not. It's going to be a bit of a difficult one. She was only released on bail yesterday, so she's now, in effect, committing offences on bail. She's obviously got a problem with drink, so I've got a mind to release her on bail with conditions not to consume any alcohol. But I don't know whether I would trust her to do that. Um, if not, I would have to remand her in custody to go to court on Monday morning which, when you see how she's presenting today, seems really harsh. Next in is what's known in the trade as a drugs packer. There was a warrant out for Mark Mattock's arrest for possession of heroin. This is, um, this is Mark. Can we take his cuffs off? It's been good as gold, no problem. Yeah. It's the packer, isn't it? Oh, right. Yeah, the cuffs will have to stay on. All right, no problem. We'll have to remain cuffed in the front. We have to assume you've still got things secreted. He's known for keeping a stash up his bottom, away from the long arm of the law. How are you feeling now? Shit. The cuffs stay on so he can't swallow any drugs if or when they make an appearance. Do you know what the crack is? Crack. <laughs> so yeah. has, it, has he swallowed it? Or... He's plugged packages. They've really? recovered eight. He's gone to hospital. They said they'd do an internal, but I mean, he said, no, I'm not having you put your fingers up the backside. So for tonight, it's all stalled. The question is, is there a package number nine? Hiya. So, for my information, what were in the packages that you have produced? Heroin. It's a little bit of personal. Right. Okay. We'll be checking on you quite regularly, Mark. If you need to go to the toilet, you'll have to use our commode. So Mark has his own ensuite. A comfy bed on one side and a luxury commode on the other. We've got to physically watch him. If the guy does want to have a poo, basically, then he'll have to sit on that on a commode. And then once he's done, done the business, one of us will actually have to uh, search the poo to see whether there's uh, these packages within, within the poo. It's an easy job till you have to break out the sieves and the buckets and start sifting through it to see if there's anything in it. You come in, you do your job, and you hope to goodness they don't do a poo in your eight hours. It's police policy to have two officers on constant watch. If any more drugs do emerge, Mark faces seven years in prison. Jeanette has now been in custody for over 12 hours and is starting to show all the signs of a withdrawing alcoholic. Another addiction problem for Nurse Adele. Can you pop your hand there? Sit back in your chair. No, I'm OK. I'm OK. I know that you're OK, but I need you to do it. Don't wind me up. I don't want to do it. Just, just do I it. I want you to hold this for no. me. Come on, Jeanette. I know, but I'm sick of all that. I know what my blood pressure is. Very early symptoms of alcohol withdrawal are maybe a mild tremor, sweats, anxiety, which affects people's behaviour. They can come across as quite rude. Do you want help for your alcohol withdrawals? Yeah. Do you want some medication? Three alcohol withdrawals to help you feel better. What? Diazepam? Yeah. Yeah, go right. on. Right, yeah. sit back in your chair, relax. Jeanette's in the early stages of alcohol withdrawal state and um, anxious, as you saw, and a little bit agitated. If somebody's alcohol dependent and then suddenly stops drinking, it can cause seizures and then ultimately death. Jeanette's cold turkey makes it even harder for Sergeant Grunner to decide her fate. I do see that you've got a bit of a tremor, so you can't be making that up. It will affect my bail decision because the bail conditions I was considering applying was not to consume alcohol, not to purchase alcohol, etc. If she's an alcoholic, I'm sentencing her to be very poorly or kill her, potentially, if she can't drink. So, um, yeah, if she's charged, she'd have to stay now, without a shadow of a doubt. And she is being charged with a fray for banging on her neighbour's doors with a hammer. I'm not um, going to be bailing you this time, Dan. I think you got bailed from Queen's Gardens the other day, mm. and you went out within hours causing more problems. 
I've got a duty to protect members of the public that are victims uh, in this case, and I genuinely believe that if I release you now, you'll end up drinking again. So to prevent you offending on bail, I'm going to keep you in custody to go before the next court. So you'll stay here. We will look after you here. I There's... don't believe that. I haven't done anything. I'll tell you what I did, shall I? Dan, just, just I'll tell to you me, what then. I really did. Dan, listen to me. Really also, bad. I'm aware of your alcohol right. withdrawal issues. I'm um, now suicidal. Well... So you better get me on a suicide watch in the hospital. Just have a seat down there for me now, for now, Jan. Well, uh, you're right. Like that recording, please. <clears throat> when I die, he's responsible for my death. Yeah. Okay. And I want him to go to court. Go into a camera cell, Jan. Okay. All right, nothing's going to come to it. Jeanette's suicide threats can't be ignored. Another detainee for the camera cell. I want to start, please. Right. I want to, I don't want to stay here. I've been frightened of you all. I'm disturbed. I feel like I'm in some sort of crazy, mad place where they're just trying to do awful things to me. Right, let me speak to the nurse. I feel mentally and physically very ill right. now. I do. The withdrawal symptoms are getting worse. But within 10 minutes, Jeanette is fast asleep and stays that way for the next 12 hours. There are over a million alcoholics in the UK. Oh, does that make you fucking big, does it? Booze features in half of all crime. It's just got this gent into trouble. Stuart Taylor has had a delightful evening at a charity dinner. But a mix-up with the taxi's home may have cost him dear. It was a, a Valentine's dinner on behalf of the Yorkshire Scan Appeal, of which my partner, Patricia, is uh, one of the girls that collect money. Uh, I have got £105 in cash, yeah. wallet and various cards, yeah. cufflinks, a watch, bow tie, and seven bank cards in his name. Apparently, someone uh, reported me for drink driving. To be fair, I did book a cab, but everybody in the cab, the one in the room, because two other people jumped in. So I took a chance, and I drove. But someone had reported me. The police were on the back straight away. Stuart blew under the legal limit at the roadside, but the coppers believe he'd not long finished a drink, so his alcohol level could still be rising. Okay, Stuart, I require to provide two specimens of the breath for analysis by means of an approved device. The specimen with a low proportion of alcohol in your breath may be used as evidence, and the other will be disregarded. Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath for analysis? Certainly. Thank you. Just want to come with Swiss, Stuart? Certainly. Anyone that comes into custody for drink driving will be put on the breath test machine. It doesn't matter what sex they are, how old they are, what social standing they're from. Uh, if we think they've been driving a motor vehicle on the road whilst they didn't drink, they will be put on the machine. Make sleep breath and just blow and I'll keep encouraging you. Keep going at that, buddy. Keep going, 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 keep going. Finish, there you go. Okay. Relax now. Sweat the results. You're looking for anything below 40. Anything below 40 is no further action. The legal limit's 35. Okay. If it's between 40 and 50, we have the option of replacing the breast sample with either blood or urine. Okay? Yeah. Sure. And anything over 50 is a straight charge. Drunk drivers cause 8,000 road accidents a year. Over 2,000 people are killed or seriously injured. You blow the legal limit, so there'll be no further action will be left on. All right, very much. No problem. So it's below the legal limit, so it will take you down. Just. You know? Just. Just. You must have a good metabolism, that's all I can say. Get rid of the shoe, let's get um, home. All right. You. Thank you. So Stuart's on the move. And so too is the drugs packer. Mark Mattox is finally on the commode, but he's in slow motion. He's trying to go now, but it's the case of our ones a piece of string, isn't it, at the end of the day? For tonight, we're stuck. We just watch him and monitor him and make sure he's OK. He may well be completely clear, but then again, he might not be. There's a specialised kit um, that um, we have to view uh, whatever he produces. There's protective equipment in there, gloves, suits, uh, masks, everything like that. But ultimately, we have to look and see what he's produced. 
one of the parts of the job that um, neither one of us particularly <laughs> enjoys. It. Everyone will be relieved, particularly Mark. Yeah, fair play, fair play. Okay. I can't hear you with your store closed, by the way, if it makes it any easier for you. Mark's straining to cooperate, but it's going to be a long job. The beat goes on. Ryan's been banging on for hours, but the party's over. He's going to be charged. But he's so volatile, the coppers will have to charge him through the hatch. No, 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 I'll just punch you. Ryan, come to the hatch, please. Come here, I need to read this to you. You're going to be charged. The CPS has made a decision that you're to be charged. So what does this mean? Listen, the 8th of May 2012 at the city of Kingston on Hull, without lawful excuse, damage the television to the value of the unknown amount. Also, on the 8th of May 2012, city of Kingston on Hull, assaulted PC 2168 Dodgson. What the fuck did they assault him when you're all sat down here? Only a bunch of big heads. From the police act 1996. Yeah, Am I staying in here? You are. Well, on. Well, you'll be at court in the morning. You made your comments in the interview, they've been noted, that's a decision. That's the reason you're staying for court tomorrow. Why? Because you're too aggressive. I don't think it's safe for you to be released. You're far too violent, we're not letting you out tonight. You've been going absolutely mad in this cell, kicking the living daylights out the door. When you came out of the cell earlier on, it took five officers to fight with you and put you back in. We're not having that again. Well, get your five officers in here, right? And I'll smash a lot of your heads in, you fucking idiot. Yeah, good lad. It's morning at Priory Road, and breakfast is served. There we go. Come on in. Follow this young lady here. Jeanette's made it through the nightmares and mood swings of detox. So, how are you feeling this morning? We've managed to get much sleep last night. I think I slept OK, yeah. Yeah, cos you look quite well this morning. Nurse Jackie is giving her a morning after the night before check-up. Your temperature's fine as well. I won't give you anything just now. Because you're actually doing fine and all your robs are fine. So I'll let you go and have your breakfast and that cup of tea that you've been after. Okay. All right, darling. I've had about 15 milligrams of diazepam. And now she says I don't need any more. I didn't have any last night. They've got me back off the drink. I said, I mean, it's worth it for that. And I needed, you see, if I could have got a brandy, I would have got one. And I can't because I'm locked in. So in a way, it's not very pleasant, but they've done me a favour in a way. It's a revolution for Jeanette, but she's still not sure whether it was inspired by Marxism or communism. I've been watching the, the election results in, 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 in Fra you know, the French elections. You know, I mean, I'm not sort of rational, you know, I'm not... I'm not suggesting that I'm rational when, I, when I'm drunk, I'm not. It's just a really weird thing to say. <laughs> well, I'm nuts. <laughs> Finally, after a long day's wait, Mark has done a number two. But did it contain a number nine? This gentleman should sit to the toilet. Mm. Steve, do you want to do all this? Yeah. Oh, dear. We're just checking to see if there's any drugs, which I'm quite happy that there isn't. Oh. <laughs> Come all outside. It's, there's nothing in his stool, and it's very smelly. Um, that wasn't very pleasant. Um, that's not the nicest thing that to do this year, is it? No. Um, it's not something we do on a regular basis. In fact, it's twelve years of policing. It's the first time I've had to do it, and hopefully, I won't have to do it again. Marks off the hook, off the toilet, and out the door. And with their trophy spatula, no one's moving faster than the officers. 
Right, do you just want to pop them in that corner where that one is? Jeanette, the former school teacher, was eventually found guilty of a fray. She was given a 12-month supervision order and told to undergo treatment for alcohol dependency. Rhythmic Ryan Chadburn was found guilty. He was given a 12-month conditional discharge for criminal damage and assaulting a police officer. Drugs packer Mark Mattox wasn't prosecuted for possession this time because he was already starting nine months in prison for having a stun gun and a load of cannabis. In drug craze confusion, Scott had turned himself in for a burglary he hadn't committed. Now he's being released without charge, but with his life. Yeah, I think Scott is obviously very grateful at the moment, in the moment. He realises that he's been pulled back from the brink, but I suggest that a day or two passes, he's back outside again, and uh, it'll be a distant memory. He won't be thinking about that when he's filling himself full of drugs the next time. Next time, he might not be so lucky. But it's not over yet. Well, I'll get my methadone, I'll get my methadone. I don't know if we've got it. If not, then you're going to have to wait until tomorrow. No, you haven't got my methadone. We have? Yeah. And I need it. If I don't, I'll have to spend that. I don't want to spend that on smash. And that's the only way I, I, I'm going to survive the day. We can't, we can't let you believe we've got. The only way I, I can survive is by buying, a, buy, sure. buying heroin, and I don't want to buy heroin. Yeah. There's nothing I can do for you. All right, let you go. Methadone is used to wean addicts off heroin. In custody, it can be prescribed, but when people are leaving, the police won't return personal supplies if they don't know they're clean. I don't want bail, you know. Can you keep me in? No. You're not getting bail. You're getting NFA, you're getting released. He's so desperate, he's begging to stay in custody. I mean, if they kept me in, they'd give me my phone, wouldn't they? Uh, there's no reason to keep him in, is there? Yeah, but... They could be, couldn't they? I could give him one, couldn't I? And then I get my methadone at least. And he's got no cigarettes either. More desperate measures. Oh, he's got a bit of sick somewhere. It would be nice to think that it would actually uh, put him off taking this muck that puts him like he is, but it won't, and he'll be back. And no doubt we'll have to save him again at some point. And he was back, arrested no fewer than seven times in the following three weeks. Next time in the lockup. I've got all coppers and bastards Wait, told on the inside of my phone. This man has a close brush with the custody suite counter. You're gonna take him straight to a cell. Yeah. 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 Another is questioning police tactics. What type of police state is this? Are we in Colombia? Why is that? Still stuck behind me with a fucking taser. And after three attacks on his business, this man's had enough. Somebody was breaking in the van, so I confronted him and he swung around with this this bar and he hit me on the hand, but I took it off him and uh, sprayed him with it. But now he's on the wrong side of the law. GBH with intent, um, one down from murder, really. The only element missing is that he didn't kill somebody. Now, if you've already met Citizen Khan, you'll know you're in for a laugh. If not, stay with us on BBC One. He's coming your way next.